Hello and welcome to Zig's Math Lessons. Let's do some trigonometric identities. First of all, what is an identity? It's an equation that has infinite numbers of solutions. Here's an example. 4 times x plus 3 equals 4x plus 12. This is an identity because it's true for all x. For all x, it's true that 4 times x plus 3 equals 4x plus 12. It's a very basic identity. Here's another one. x squared minus 25 over x minus 5 equals x plus 5. This is true for almost all values of x. There's only one value of x it's not true for. If x equals 5, it's not true. Any other value of x, it's true for. So it's an equation that has infinite numbers of solutions. It's true for all values of x except x equals 5. This is true because if you factored x squared minus 25, you'd have x minus 5 times x plus 5, and the x minus 5 would cancel here, and you'd have x plus 5, which is what the right side is. So this is a, a very basic concept of an identity. The fundamental trig identities. We're going to look at fundamental identities that are used to establish more complex identities. The fundamentals are the, the basic ones. So let's look at the basic ones. The first one we'll look at is called the quotient identity. Sine over cos. So if we looked at sine over cos, We'll consider sine to be opposite over hypotenuse. We'll consider cos to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And let's look at where this leads us. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. Now we have a fraction over a fraction. And that means we invert and multiply. So it becomes opposite over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over adjacent. We have appropriate canceling here, and we have opposite over adjacent. Now, if you consult Sokotoa, opposite over adjacent is tangent. And so we have sine over cos equals tangent. And that's a fundamental trig identity. It's true for all theta, except for the theta that makes the cos of theta equal to 0. It's true for infinite numbers of theta. Here's another identity. Tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. The next identity, the next fundamental identity, is called the Pythagorean identity. And that says that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. But this one can be rearranged. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1, but it comes in what I call three flavors. Sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared. If you, if you just drag cos squared across the equal sign, or we could dry, draw sine squared across that equal sign and say that cos squared equals 1 minus sine squared. This is the three flavors of the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1, or isolate sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared, or isolate cos squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So let's recall a little bit about factoring. Here's 1 minus sine squared, factor it. It's a difference of squares. It will be 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine. Sine squared minus cos squared, again, a difference of squares. It's going to be sine minus cos times sine plus cos, like that. We need to be able to factor. Sine squared minus 2 sine, common factor out the sine. And we've got sine times sine minus 2. Now, when you write a line, check a line. So if we multiplied this out, we'd have sine squared, and we'd have minus 2 sine. So that's right. Let's factor this. Sine squared x minus sine x cos x minus 12 cos squared x. What, one way to think about this is to compare it to, or think of it as if, the sine was a and the cos was b. Then it would be this, a squared minus ab minus 12b squared. But we can factor this from previous grades. 
where we think of two numbers that multiply to 12, that subtract to 1, that's 4 times 3. Put them into brackets with the plus and the minus, because plus 3 minus 4 is this minus 1. And, and we have factored this expression. We can check it by multiplying it out. a squared minus 4ab plus 3ab is minus ab, and then finally minus 12b squared. So now, applying this skill to this big expression here, and this factors quite nicely to this. It's analogous to this example here. S sine plus 3 cos, sine minus 4 cos. And we can check our factoring by multiplying this out. We're just gathering together the skills we're going to need. The fundamental identities, here's the collection. These are the Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cos squared is one in three flavors. They're just rearrangements of each other. Tangent is sine over cos. And the other one was secant squared equals tangent squared plus one. Now we're going to prove a couple of identities. This is what this whole exercise has been about. Let's prove that tangent over sine equals 1 over cos. To do this, we draw a line underneath the equal sign. See this vertical line underneath the equal sign? That has meaning. It means we're not going to do algebra across this equal sign. That's what this, it's like a wall. We're not going to cross multiply. We're not going to drag anything across the equal sign. We're just going to work with LS, which is left side, or RS, which is right side. Tangent we know to be sine over cos. So we'll turn tangent into sine over cos. Sine, of course, is sine over 1. And when you divide by that fraction, you invert and multiply. So it's sine over cos times 1 over sine. The signs cancel right here. These signs cancel off. And we have 1 over cos. We notice that this 1 over cos matches this 1 over cos. So we can make the statement, therefore, left side equals right side. And tangent theta over sine theta does indeed equal 1 over cos. Let's do this a couple more times. Proving an identity. First, draw a line underneath the equal sign. Next, sine theta plus cos theta squared. We'll work with this left side. Sine theta plus cos theta squared. We're squaring a binomial, so we'll get three terms. We'll get sine squared plus 2 sine theta cos theta plus cos squared, because it'll be the first term squared, the 2 times the product of the terms, and the last term squared. And notice this. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. And so we have 1 plus 2 sine theta cos theta, which matches the right side. So all we did was square a binomial, use the fundamental identity, and notice that it matches and make the statement. Therefore, left side equals right side. A third example, prove a following trig identity. Tan squared minus sine squared equals tan squared sine squared. Now, really, who would have thought that the subtraction equals the multiplication? Draw a line underneath the equal sign. Tan squared is sine squared over cos squared because tan is sine over cos. So tan squared is sine squared over cos squared. Now, we're going to subtract fractions. So we'll need the skill of subtracting fractions. We'll do it with a common denominator, and it's now sub the fractions have been subtracted. We can now factor the numerator. They both have a sine squared in them, so common factor out sine squared. We have sine squared times 1 minus cos squared. So we did some subtracting of fractions, then we did some factoring, and now 1 minus cos squared is that fundamental identity. It's one of the flavors. Refer back to it if you need to. 1 minus cos squared is really sine squared. 
So we can replace 1 minus cos squared with sine squared. And now sine squared over cos squared, well, that's like sine over cos squared, because so it must be tangent squared. Sine over cos squared is sine squared over cos squared, so it's tangent squared. And that matches the right side. Tan squared, sine squared, it matches the right side. So we can make this statement. I'm Ziegel V at B. Stunk, and thanks for watching. If you liked it, leave a like. If you like the content, please subscribe. Check back daily for updates and new videos, and I'll see you soon.